Hey, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know about my comic Dark Phantom. Issues 1 through 9 are available now for free on Webtoon, with issue 10 coming soon. We've put a lot of work into it, and it would mean a lot if you would check it out. Thanks, and let's get on with the video. Hey, hey I see you there, nostalgia YouTubers talking about PBS kid shows. Trying to step on my turf, huh? Okay, what's some of the shows you're talking about? Oh, Clifford the Big Red Dog, you're asking if anyone remembers Clifford. What's this? Is this Arthur? You're asking if people remember Arthur? No, no, no. Here on the Class Act Jack channel, I like to dive a little deeper. When I ask, does anybody remember, I mean it. With that said, does anybody remember Maya and Miguel? Apparently not many people do. I mean, look at the Amazon Prime page. Who could forget such classic episodes as When Maya Meet Andy and Prince Tio. <laughs> FKA the Doubtful Prince. When Paco stops speaking, Maya and Santiago take him to the vet. Who is Santiago? Maya and Miguel is a show I have a lot of vivid memories of, but those memories are really just of very specific moments and lines. Like, these images are burned in my brain, but I didn't really remember what the show as a whole was like. So I decided to sit down and watch season one. Just season one, though. I don't think I could handle all five seasons. The first thing that hit me when I turned on episode one was the theme song. The lyrics aren't exactly anything to write home about. It kind of feels like they just threw them together in about 20 minutes, but the music is so catchy that it immediately attached itself to my brain and got stuck in my head for days. And now I curse you with it. It's Maya, it's Maya and Miguel. Maya and Miguel. What they will do next, you never can tell. It's Maya. I'm not a big fan of this animation or these character designs. Like, they're fine, they're serviceable, apart from a few hiccups every now and then, but they're not super expressive and I really don't like the oversized heads. Rats ass looking ass. Although I did really like how they drew food. It's simple, but the show really made me want flan and tamales as a kid. Actually, come to think of it, I'm not sure if I ever had either. I'll put that one on the old bucket list. Anyway, Maya and Miguel is about two siblings named... Uh... I forget. Basically, every episode presents a new problem, or sometimes there is no problem, but Maya just sees one that isn't there, and she devises a wacky harebrained scheme to fix it. The theme song implies that Maya and Miguel are equal partners in all this, but in the actual show, Miguel is more of a hapless victim that always gets roped into these things. I Miguel! S.O.S! When you say S.O.S. like that, I get a hollow cramping pain in my stomach, right under my but lips, right here! I guess they must have realized that too, because about midway through the season, they changed the lyrics in the theme song from They make a great team as they each do their part to He leads with his head and she follows her heart Although they really only do that for one episode, so who knows. One thing I quickly picked up on about Maya and Miguel was that it's very plot light. Every episode feels like it has one idea, and they're just struggling to stretch it out for a full 20 minutes. It usually goes. Maya discovers a problem, comes up with a few plans to solve it that all go horribly wrong, and it reaches an inevitable happy ending. The middle of the episode is usually just filled with whatever wacky hijinks Maya and her friends can get up to in whatever setting they choose for each episode. I think this really only works when they're able to get really over the top with it, like the episode where Maya accidentally loses Miguel's expensive baseball card. So her solution is to get him that player's autograph to make up for it. This results in Maya and her friends accidentally singing the national anthem while disguised as a boy band, and Maya running out onto the field dressed as a moose and terrorizing Miguel's favorite player, who just happens to have a crippling fear of moose. I'm, I'm not making this up, this is real. Of course, this format can also be really boring, like when Maya accidentally breaks the calavera she borrowed from her abuela Elena, and then she just kind of spends the whole episode being scared to tell her about it. How dare this show made for elementary school age children bore me, a 23 year old adult. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. Like most PBS kids shows, Maya and Miguel was made to educate kids. These were usually simple life lessons about friends and family, always telling the truth, don't judge people before you get to know them, that sort of thing. 
They also tried to teach Spanish, although it was done a lot more subtly than something like, say, Dora. Rather than turning to the camera to explain the definition every time they said a Spanish word, they usually have the characters repeat it in English without breaking the flow of the scene. Or in some cases, they'll just expect the viewer to pick up on the meaning through context clues. It really helps to add to the more grounded tone of the show, and it helps a guy like me whose Spanish education really only amounted to being shown a DVD of Muzzy on repeat in elementary school. That might be a good video, should I do? Does anybody remember Muzzy? My and Miguel also featured a lot of representation that you don't normally see in a lot of kids' shows. Obviously the main characters are Mexican-American, but it's also interesting to note that their family lives in an apartment rather than a house. I don't remember seeing that too often on PBS Kids. The only other example I can think of is Francine's family on Arthur. The kids' friends are also quite diverse. You got Maggie, a Chinese girl played by Lucy Liu? Really? Huh. Neat. Anyway, there's also Theo, the black kid who's also a science geek, and Andy, a kid with only one arm, which is something you don't normally see a lot of. Usually when a kid's show has a physically disabled character, they're in a wheelchair, so kudos to Maya and Miguel for shaking it up. I was surprised by how much I ended up liking these characters. Any given episode, I had chosen a new one as my current favorite. I mean, they're not especially deep or anything, but I think they keep them real enough without overdoing it too much with the PBS Kids character friendliness. Although the one thing that kept me from liking the show too much as a kid was the fact that all the characters were super athletic and into sports. Now, it might surprise you to know that I didn't relate to that very much. I know, I know, please contain your shock. I think the main thing that drove me to this show was their pet parrot Paco, since I did and still do really like the idea of having a pet bird. Paco for president! Vote Paco! Look at this little raincoat and umbrella hat and tell me Paco is not a king. I remember as a kid I had a friend who hated Mayan Miguel, and he described it as, Every episode is just them saying, Hi, parrot. Bye, parrot. And I mean, he wasn't wrong, per se. Here's something I noticed. The adults are way too lenient on the kids. Like, I get that the show is trying to teach its audience that it's okay to make mistakes as long as you own up to them, and Maya always does what she does in the name of helping others, but, like, she gets away with a lot. Take this episode, where the kids are trying to give the apartment some feng shui. Look at the mom's reaction here. Papi will be here any minute with Senor Maldonado, and I have three dishes cooking across the hall. Por favor, mamá, don't worry. Um, we'll fix everything. Ugh. I'm just saying, in any other show, those kids would have gotten their asses beat by now. Or this clip from the baseball episode I mentioned earlier. Keep in mind, Maya and Miguel have just run out onto the field and terrorized a player in the middle of a game. Listen, you kids clearly recognize your mistake, and that's the important thing. No! No! One other thing I was surprised by was how funny the show was. I mean, it's not laugh-out-loud hilarious or anything, and I'd say I was mostly bored for 70% of the time, but sometimes it caught me off guard. When it hits, it really hits. Here, I'll show you a few of my favorite jokes out of context, and maybe you'll see what I mean. Remember what happened last time you tried to help someone get a D? <laughs> <laughs> this is yucky! I don't drink yucky! But don't worry, Maya. I'll visit whenever I'm not too busy enjoying my freedom. Don't even think about it. Okay, so all in all, do I recommend Maya and Miguel as some forgotten gem of a show? No, but it was nice to revisit it again. I had forgotten just how many little things from the show stuck with me over the years. There are a lot of lines like Time out! Flag on the play! that I think are permanently burned in my brain due to how often they were repeated in PBS Kids ads. So no, I don't think you need to watch My and Miguel and I probably won't ever watch it again, but it was nice taking a trip down memory lane and hopefully I reminded you of some childhood memories as well.
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider liking and subscribing. If you really like me, follow me on Twitter at ClassActJack or consider giving me a buck on Patreon if you so wish. Links to everything in the description. I'll see you guys later. Brother and sister.